Hey, Dante James is here. Dante. Dante, how's it going? How's it going, boys? It's going well. Uh, you and Alan yesterday saw Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Yep. Uh, it is, I think it's safe to talk about it, Alan. Yeah. With 20 minutes, I don't think Disney's going to. I don't think they're going to care. Thing is for this. I'm not going to change it <laughs> with you. Um, all right. You guys have not seen the movie. I have heard good to mixed. Uh, can you, and, and, and this is, we're going to keep this fairly not, we're going to keep it fairly non-spoiler. Yeah. So fairly non-spoiler. We can could, we could talk about the first act. I, I think that's first, safe to do. First act. I want to hear a little bit of the story, uh, but, but, uh, and, and, but we're not going to do major spoilers. We will a week from today, we will be doing spoiler filled review a week from today because I'll have seen it and other people will have had had the opportunity to see it. this is marvel's new effort so i think the big questions are what the hell is this movie even about yeah um does is it a fitting does james gunn stick the landing and the the other thing is is where is this where does this sort of put things with part of the future of marvel because i think everyone's expecting to really enjoy uh guardians of the galaxy volume three but after that what do they got and does this close the book on, on Guardians? Does it introduce a new team? Or is it just done? Uh, I, I'm going to let you guys talk. Um, uh, Alan, yeah. So yeah. I'm just, I'm just I mean, setting, you guys story. Up, setting you guys up so I can eat a donut okay. off camera. But, yeah, let, but, let, like, let, tell, us, tell us briefly the story, kind of what the setup is. Yeah, so basically, uh, if you watch the hol holiday special, uh, the Guardians' new headquarters is on Nowhere. And uh, the, the film opens with the Guardians just kind of uh, feeling a little despondent in life. Uh, you know, Ra Rocket has some uh, PTSD issues he's working through, and Peter Quill is drunk out of his mind after losing Gamora. Um, so uh, basically, out of nowhere, uh, while they're on nowhere, uh, Adam Warlock flies in and basically tries to kidnap uh, Rocket for the high evolutionary. Uh, in the process, they're able to defeat Adam Warlock, but uh, Rocket is critically injured. And the High Evolutionary who created Rocket, who who evolved him, uh, put this security measure on his heart so that no one can do any medical procedures on him. And so the Guardians now have to find, go to the, the vault, the data vault of the High Evolutionary, get that passcode and save Rocket's life. And that's basically the plot of the movie. Um, it's uh, the way I, I I see it is, uh, you know, in the first Guardians of the Galaxy, they're all basically put together, but they're all for themselves. And this is the movie that kind of brings it all full circle, where where the entire team uh, goes into action to save Rocket's life. So uh, that's that's essentially the the plot there. <clears throat> um, but uh, I, I'll say this: uh, the movie is good, uh, but there are a lot of flaws to it. Um, I will say that uh, the story is very dense with sub stories. Um, you know, th this should be just a rescue mission to get the information they need about Rocket and, and make him better. But there's a lot of stuff going on here. There's human trafficking. There's genetic mutation. Uh, there's Adam Warlock, his history, his origins. Uh, there's the high evolutionary and what he's trying to do. Um, there's, uh, you know, it's... And this is all crammed into a two and a half hour movie. Um, well, two hours and fifteen minutes. Two hours fifteen. The um the final act, the the big the big battle, uh, is relentless in action. Uh, it's it gets you know there's so much packed into this movie, and and you're gonna get whiplash. And I will say that the reason to watch this movie is the Guardians themselves. This is everything. Everything is. They're surrounded by a very flawed story, but it's the Guardians. The fact that you've, we've been with them from the very beginning, and they've evolved into this team. And I think what James Gunn does so well is he 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 brings out their personalities, where they've come uh, all this way personally, and um, and then brings them together as that team. And that's that's the heart of this movie, you know, because you're here to see. Uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy in action, and they are in action. Everyone has uh, their moments to shine, and uh, and this is, you know, this is basically a great send off for James Gunn to go on and do better things. And and I have a sneaky suspicion 
that um, that uh, maybe Disney tinkered with the editing a little bit to 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 make it a less good movie. But that's my conspiracy theory behind it. Yeah, Dante, what do you think? Um, I personally love the movie. I I, I liked it a lot. Uh, I I think that for me, James Gunn is three and up. You know, I I like I love the first Guardians. I liked the second Guardians, and I really really liked this last iteration of the, the story. Uh, I, uh, I I agree. There were some points in the film where the story gets a little convoluted, but when you're doing a story involving the high evolutionary, <laughs> you know, it's going to be convoluted. It's going to be there's going to be a lot in there. You know, he's not he's not a simple villain. You know. And uh, I think it was a great send off for Gunn. I think that, look, Mar we all know Marvel's been in a tank for the past two years, at least two or three years. And so to have this movie come out, especially right after how terrible Ant-Man was, <laughs> um, I, I, I don't know if I'm jaded. Like, I don't know if, if, if it was better because it was so much better than Ant-Man or if it was because it was, it was an actually good movie. And, um, but honestly, I think if, even if you're just a, a, a minute fan of the guardians, you're going to like this movie. I, I, I think everybody sells it, man. I, I think, uh, Chris Pratt was, was phenomenal in his film. I, 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 I it was a great send off for star lord i would definitely say that and uh take that however you want it was a great send-off for star lord i'm not i'm not spoiling anything by saying that uh i i think that like alan said everybody got a moment to shine in this film everybody and rocket was really the heart of the whole film and and you you see how much of a loss that character would be if he weren't there to, to this team like you feel it you know and um uh, i i just honestly i i, I there's going to be mixed reactions of course you know some people are going to not like it just because it's the mcu but i think for me james gunn nailed it i i think they're like they're, they're don't get me wrong there was some misses in the film <laughs> uh there was definitely some misses but overall i i thoroughly enjoyed it yeah. Yeah. I think the criticisms of the movie will revolve around things that didn't involve the guardians. Yeah. I, I totally agree like with that. What? Like what? Yeah. Uh, you know, like, like I'm already seeing it, like the Adam Warlock character, um, there's what you see is what you get, but they do explain it in a way. I don't know if you're going to buy the explanation or be happy with the explanation, but there's let's just say it's, it's not the Adam Warlock from the comic. Yeah. Let's, well, let's then, just put it that way. But it's, it's intentional. There's, there's an intentionality behind it. Yeah. Well, look, I've I've heard you guys. Uh, it sounds it sounds I it's, I don't know I don't I don't I don't like it. I don't like I don't what based on what I've heard. Rocket is sad from PTSD. Yeah, he, he's as a medical thing, but he can't be operated on on because of what the high evolutionary did. All this sounds like plot convenience stuff. It doesn't like based on your description. It sounds bad to me. I know you enjoyed it, like in the moment, but like I don't know, man. Like yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, like it, it, it makes a lot more sense, though. Me. It makes yeah, I know. It's sense. it's like trying to describe the plot is is yeah. It makes a lot it. more sense when you when you understand what the high evolutionary purpose is, right, and what he's done to other people or other beings. He that that makes sense. It, like it makes sense within the movie. Okay. Yeah, and like I said, this is this is movie is. Okay, so it, they're done. Guardians of the Galaxy done. Yeah. Um, so after this, like, but but this is the tribute to the team. That's why I'm saying is I, what I enjoyed about the movie was the team. Um, but I do feel like I walked away from the overall story feeling like this was not. Uh, this there was just this was a flawed story. This is definitely the worst of the three, but probably the third best. Uh, so that's, you know, that that's kind of the feeling I got walking. I, 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 will put it, I would put it actually above the second movie for me. Would you? No, I would, no, I think I would. I would definitely put the second one above this one. The second, the second one had its moments. I mean, some really great moments. 
Well, but. this movie does have great moments, man. And there's some really fun cameos in this film. So it's it's not all like dread and dreary. I mean, there, there's some fun parts of it for sure. I mean, it's a Guardians film. There's going to be fun moments. But um, it is a heavier tone than the other films. Yeah. But I think, I mean, again, the heart of it is the fact that they're, the, the entire motivation of the entire team, Sans Gamora, is they, they want to save Rocket's life. And and that's that's the motivation of everything they do in this movie, and that's very different from the very first movie when it was all about selfish motives. Uh, and so the, again, this is this is the third volume. It's bringing the team full circle and and just really nailing home the fact that this is a family. So and so what you're true. saying what you're saying is the first Guardians movie is still the best of the three. Yes. Yeah, for sure. And then the second one was met, and this one is. Seems like it's just okay. I like the second one. I like the second one. I, I, I look, I love the second I like one. Parts I, of the second. I, I especially the fact that they brought back the original guardians in the second movie yeah, for me yeah, was with Starhawk yeah. and all those guys. So mm-hmm. you know, I was an old school guardians reader back in the 80s. Mm-hmm. So I, I know that whole team. And uh so I really like the second movie, and I like the fact that in this movie, you know, we get more of the uh of the old team as well. So I mean, there's a lot of cool like guest spots in this film. But uh, I think, yeah, maybe it wasn't the best Guardians film, but it was a solid movie. Like, I walked away feeling like I enjoyed that. Yeah, I, I will, I'll tell you how you'll feel. The third act is probably half the movie, and you're going to feel exhausted after going, after going through it. It's just dense, dense, dense. And there's at least five or six endings. In, I, in I agree with that, and uh, and I think if there's the fault, if the people if people are going to complain about this movie, it's going to be about that third act just being too much. Well, okay. So are there post credit scenes, mid credit? Yes. Okay, uh, yes. how many? Like what? There's there's three, and I will say this: uh, it's all contained within the Guardians world, so there's no reference outside of yeah. Uh, there's no Kang references of, or no yeah, Kang. No reference to the MCU outside of, outside of this movie. Right. Okay. So. There it's very go. self-contained. Yeah. All right. So, so yeah, there, there's no Captain Marvel doesn't show up in the movie. Yes. Well, that's a good thing. Um. So, uh, I see. I can't. The questions I want to ask, like who dies, would be a spoiler. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Let's see. Your <laughs> I know. And, and, and who we, dies? We, we just can't. We just we can't even. Can't we say. can't even talk about that third act. Oh, so the third act, it's really, it's dramatic. It's, this is. No, this third is act crazy. is action. It's wall to wall action. And it's, but, it's exhausting. But it's, it's too much. Is it one of those things where you look at this and like, geez, you could have edited. This would be better as an under two hour movie. I mean, Either I felt like the, the time was, the time was fair. Two hours and 15 minutes. It, it was, you know, to, to I, wrap I'll up, say, to wrap up a series. That's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say this. It, it's not that it needed to be edited down. It needed to remove a subplot or two. Yeah, um, I agree with it, that. There's a human trafficking element that was like, okay, this is just an extend the movie out. Um, I mean, it's good, but it's going to extend this movie for longer. All and, right, now watching this, this same person, James Gunn, is writing and directing Superman. What What is... Did you see any sort of tastes of that in this? No, or this is a thoughts? pure Guardian film. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's already said at CinemaCon that Superman is not a comedy. His Superman is not a comedy. And so it's going to definitely be... We're, we're going to see him finally flex his dramatic chops. And, and I will say this. Comedians tend to do better with drama than, than the other way around. So I'm, I'm hopeful. This is... Uh, let, let's be clear. This is a good movie. Uh, if you love The Guardians, you're going to love this movie. Um, and and to, to, to send us off, it's... <laughs> It, it, just like Picard season three, this is the last good Marvel you're going to see for a very long time. Yes, absolutely. Because what's the lineup uh, after this? It's the Marvels. The Marvels. Well, you got and Secret the- Invasion, but I don't know if you count that as. I there's a couple things I've heard that Secret Invasion is terrible. That it's just that the scripts were really good, but it was too tinkered with. It was too yeah. um, noted. Let's say. It was. It just got too many notes. So I hear. Yeah. I'm. What I'm hearing is Secret Invasion is awful, and the Marvels will surprise people because it's actually entertaining, 
because my understanding is, and you see tastes of this in the trailer, that um, Brie Larson as Captain Marvel, she really has a stick up her ass. She's a pain in the ass. And that dynamic works really well with Kamala Khan. So uh, that's- Right, and, so I, and, I, and, I, yeah. and I think if the Marvels is gonna be good in any kind of way, it's probably gonna be because of Kamala Khan. It's not gonna be because of Brie Larson. They, they basically play up the fact that she's unlikable and, and got to stick up her ass. And, and mm -hmm. a Kamala Khan is like this ball of joy and enthusiasm. Yeah. And, the perfect balance, you know, basically. Yeah, and it's a perfect balance of that. So I'm told that actually the Marvels is fun. It's just mm. fun and it'll surprise people. That's what yeah, I Yeah, but I don't think it'll be better than Guardians of the Galaxy. No, not at all. Yeah, I don't, I don't see that happening. So, gentlemen, anything else you can talk about non-spoiler wise? Uh, this. I, I think uh, as far as character development goes in this film, I, I really liked where the characters ended in their in their mm -hmm. arcs. I will say that. Yeah. I'll say that. I think characters ended? I mean, I mean, their character arcs. The way character, they character arcs. arcs. <laughs> like, like, I, I, feel, I, feel, I feel like you see major okay. growth yeah. in these characters. As, as, not, not just as a team, but as who they are as characters in in the MCU. Okay. And by the way, the trailer, it's all all scenes taken out of context. So there's so not nothing... a lot of spoilers in that one. Oh, really? So the trailers yeah. themselves, there's nothing. Yeah. Like there's a moment where where uh where Nebula is carrying Peter Quill, and that mm -hmm. happens in the first 10 minutes. Cause, cause he's, he's drunk. Like a lifeless, a lifeless <laughs> Peter Quill. Yeah, because he's drunk. He's drunk out of his mind. Well, I'm curious about um the Peter Quill, you know, Gamora, do they, you know, does their romance take flight? That would be, that, that's I mean, spoiler. clearly, clearly there are attempts and anything beyond that is a spoiler. Yeah. So he's sort of trying to reconnect with her, but it's a different her. It's not yeah. her from, you know. It's the her from Endgame, from the end of Endgame. Yeah, exactly. She's not exactly into him. Mm -hmm. yeah, I again, think I it, it, it'll spoil to say anything about that relationship. Okay, okay, but I, <laughs> it seems like they're setting up like that that Peter's going to be involved with Nebula. Yeah, that would be a spoiler as well. <laughs> God, you guys. I know, wait. Look, I mean, you, enjoy the film. Why yeah, should we, we spoil it for you? <laughs> Go see the movie. You'll see. We're, we're looking out for the audience, man. We can't just yeah. be dropping spoilers, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, a lot, while watching this movie, like going in, I'm like, oh God, what if I like it? And then I'm liking it and I'm going, well, what are what are the points in which people are just going to kind of latch in and, and attack? And I think the latching in and attack will be uh, will be that final act. Um, you know, I mean, what did you think of the high evolutionary? I, I mean, I thought he did a good job considering it's a fairly minor character. And, you know, I, 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 I think for I think for that kind of character, man, it, it was fine because mm -hmm. look, even the most hardcore Marvel fan knows very little about the high evolutionary. Yeah. It's not like a well. It's not Doctor Doom, you know what I mean. Yeah. So I thought the guy, the actor, I wish I could remember his name. He was in Peacemaker. Uh, I thought he did a great job as as that character. Okay. Yeah. Oh, All and right. James Gunn's wife is in the movie too. Oh my God! What is she doing? <laughs> a brief part or a actual? I, she has a good number of lines, but she's not in the entire movie. Wait, which character was she? She was the uh, she was the security. Uh, observer, the one giving and telling people. Oh, where to find you're them. right. That yeah. was her. I, yeah. I, I didn't place her. Yeah. All right. Well, I got to ask you, gentlemen, on a scale of one to ten, where do you rank this? You're saying it's, it's. Um, you're saying Dante that you like this movie better than Part Two. Yeah, I mean, and, and, but but not by a lot because I did like Part Two a lot. So I mean, I would say, but it's just a little bit above Part Two for me. Yeah. Um, I I give it like a seven. It's a solid I gave, seven. Eight. I gave yeah. it a seven and a half. You know, if it weren't for that, uh, just the denseness of the story, uh, it would have gotten higher score. Here's, I think, the bigger problem. A Marvel movie can't be a seven. Not now. Yeah. Like, well, like, this right is, now, a seven is good for, for the MCU. Yeah, that's true. Right now, a seven is good for the MCU. I will say this, though. You can't just do that. I feel like, I feel like at this point, like, there is, you know, people... People criticize the term Marvel fatigue, but I believe there is Marvel fatigue, not necessarily superhero or good movie fatigue, but there's fatigue about Marvel in general 
because there are things there are cliches and things people notice in all the Marvel movies or things where it's like, well, they'd never do this in a Marvel film. I don't even know if people are aware. Do you know in Disney movies, you can't have characters smoke? Yeah. They're smoking. It's been that way for a long time. It's been that way for a long time. But although, one... although in this movie, they do drop an F-bomb, so... Oh, and it's good. <laughs> yeah, it really is. <laughs> it's good. Okay, a certain context, or it's but it's but it's it's, it's well it's a, used. It's 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 there. It's it, a very it, 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 the rumor is it, 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 Chris Pratt, and it is, and where it, where it appears is just is great. Okay, I can't. Yeah. I can, it, 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 it's good. Yeah, <laughs> it'll win it win it because it comes out of nowhere and. <laughs> Well, I mean, here you go. Uh, Marvel breaking <laughs> barriers, uh, saying, saying, uh, you know, they're basically. F you! Is it as good as that? Uh, I don't know. Like, okay, yeah, look, it would be a spoiler. But, I just um, think the barriers yeah. that are being broken for Marvel, because you had Eternals had like the first gay couple, the first gay kiss, the first sex scene uh, right. in bed. Yeah. Oh my God! Eternals was so bad. Um, but didn't it, like the sex scene. I, I didn't. I didn't like anything about Eternals. I barely even remember. I saw that movie once, and it was just well, my memory is just awful. I think I purposely blocked out most of that movie. And I don't think those characters are ever coming back. I think it was a one and done. I don't think they're coming back. I think it's it. That's yeah. it's. I don't think they'll be back at all. No, I, I agree with you. Um, yeah, some people are asking, um, you know, this is the last Guardians movie. This is the last James Gunn Marvel movie. So, yes, there are cameos. Uh, Uncle Lloyd is in the movie. Howard the Duck is in the movie. Uh, Uncle Lloyd referring to Lloyd Kaufman of Troma Entertainment. Yeah. Lloyd told me that he was in Guardians 3, like, years ago. Yeah. Uh, I interviewed him for a, the podcast when we did audio only. This is how long ago, before we were doing YouTube stuff aggressively yeah. and he told me yeah oh yeah i'm in I'm guardians 3 he's he's in all the guardians movies yeah. i mean as a cameo because james like really is grateful for him kind of helping begin his career mm -hmm. so um yeah and nathan fillion is in the movie too yeah, he, so, play, he plays a pretty funny part actually cool so dante you rank guardians of the galaxy volume three a seven give it a alan seven. you're saying seven and a half yeah. your review goes up on film thread uh, um, at one o'clock one o'clock this afternoon, one p.m. Pacific time. So check that out. Uh, and do you get into spoilers in your review? No, no. I basically said about it what I said here. You know, like I said, but, the but no, 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 no. Oh. there's tons of stuff in the review that you didn't talk about on on this channel. No, so in terms of have, plot, you have to go to filmthreat.com. Oh, that's right. No, so there's read more. Alan's review. Alan, I can't be I the only guy selling it. <laughs> Yeah, yes, help, there are Easter help, eggs, and uh, there's Easter eggs in the review. There are Easter eggs. I I, I am going to say this though, just you know, and it, it, I'm kind of repeating a little bit, but uh, I think most people are going to have the biggest problem with Adam Warlock. I, I that that's my prediction. I, I think. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, fans of fans of the of Marvel are going to have problems with how they portrayed Adam Warlock. Yeah, but but let's okay. be real. I maybe have two comment, two issues with Adam Warlock in it. Uh, you know, maybe maybe it's me, but I, I've he's never left an impression on me in my years of reading comics. Right, but you have you have like Marvel purists who are going to be pissed sure. about how they portray him. Honestly, I kind of <laughs> I thought he was pretty funny. Actually, he's pretty he was, yeah. uh, his moments. He has some funny moments. Um, but Adam Warlock's not a funny character, so people are going to have an issue with how he's portrayed. By the way, let, let me end on this one. Um, the world building in this one is so much better than Ant-Man. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, you know, yeah. That's the thing. James Gunn knows how to build a world. And I would say most of the movie is is on practical sets as opposed to in the volume. Oh, really? And it, yeah. there, there are moments where they're in the volume, volume. But, but for the most part, uh, you know, they're they're on practical sets, especially the spaceships and and the, the buildings in the on the planet. Oh, that's good to hear. So I don't know where, okay, l last question on this, and we're going to move on. I didn't realize how late, oh, I mean, wow. less than half an hour on the show, and I got to get ready for FNT. Um, where does this fit? How do you feel now about the future of the MCU? Is this kind of a closing of a chapter? How does it, like, where does it, I mean, this ranks, it sounds like this is sort of, you know, 
it's not as good as one. It may or may not be as good as two. It's still a good experience because we care about these characters. But where does this, how are you feeling about the future of the MCU now based on having seen this film? And even though like, even the, the like, as you guys pointed out, the, the post credit scenes are all within the, you know, Guardians universe. Where does, where does this, where does this put us? And what is your speculation? I, I'll, I'll jump on this. I, I think, honestly, for me, I agree with a lot of the comments here where I think this could be a good ending, period, for the for the MCU. Like, honestly, I don't yeah. think I need to see another MCU film after this. It closes the chapter for me. Uh, I'm, I'm not feeling good about anything else coming up. And I don't mm-hmm. think I'm going to feel good about anything else coming up for a long time. Wow. So for me, th- this this is a this is kind of an ending chapter for me as well. I think you know what, go out on top. This this, this is as top as they're going to get. Trust me, <laughs> this is as top as they're going to get. So um, I'm probably bowing out of the MCU after Guardians. All right, yeah. I mean, you know, Chris, Chris, you and I are con- contractually obligated to watch these movies. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's um again. I'll, I'll say it again. This is this is gonna be the last good Marvel you're gonna see for a very long time. Uh, okay. So as Picard season three is was the last good Star Trek you're gonna see for a very long time, and it's just kind of sad. I'm looking at what's coming up: Marvels, Captain America, New World Order, Thunderbolts, and Blade, and nothing nothing in those titles uh, excites me at, at all. You know, not something I'm really looking for. Thunderbolts, come on, Thunderbolts. Thunderbolts. That's true. Thunderbolts. A team. God, that that's that's tragic, man. We've never seen. Look, it's going to be a low tier Suicide Squad, like the yeah. lowest tier. It, it's yeah. it's not even Thunderbolts. Let, let, let's call it what it is, man. I mean, look, you got Yelena, you got uh, Red Ghost. Uh, it, it, it's MCU the, rejects. That, that's that's what the movie is called. What? It's MCU rejects. That's what it should yeah. be called. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, wasn't that the Thunderbolts in the first place? No, no, the no they were like villains, wasn't it? It was the it was the lower tier Avengers, basically. No, they were villains that were pretending to be heroes and had like this image in the media as heroes, but they were really villains. It, it wasn't the Suicide Squad the way it became the Suicide Squad later. Oh, okay, but so the didn't motive. start out that way, man. Cool. Yeah, no, uh, they'll screw it up. <laughs> they'll screw it up. I, I guarantee you, in the new Blade movie, all the vampires are going to be white. <laughs> they're all going to be so. white and he's going to be killing white vampires the whole time. <laughs> oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> it's going to be the wokest vampire hunter movie you've ever seen. I don't know. I don't know. Do you think cuz Mahershala Ali isn't spe- isn't particularly if you've seen him in interviews, he's pretty middle of the road. He yeah, but we're he doesn't talking, he doesn't bring it, things up. But we're talking about Disney here. Yeah, that's true. The ma- the mouse always gets its way. It seems like it. It just seems like everything get, goes corporate. If yeah. Disney does stuff, it can kind of hold off for a little bit, but eventually the corporate culture yeah. and the nature of Disney as a company, it's it's like it absorbs every IP and just turns it into like a corporate soulless shell of itself, like Peter Pan and Wendy that Alan and I talked about on Wednesday. Peter Pan and Wednesday is just horrible. It's just, it's it, the worst part of it is it's just completely forgettable. I mean, most of the woke stuff that's in Peter Pan and Wendy is actually in the trailer, but the move, the, the movie itself, having seen it is just instantly forgettable. It's they're, they're not making any modern classics at all. These are all things where people will have to be reminded that, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. it's all about his daughter. It's his vorpal snack. Who knows? 